Hello everyone, this is Triple H Farmer with Triple H Farming. We're going to do a video today, just a tutorial, a guide on how to use cultivators in Farming Simulator 19. So this is going to be my first video in a set of videos I'm going to post uh, with different basic tutorial guides for Farming Simulator 19. I understand this game came out a while ago, and so most of these videos have already been up. I can't wait for Farming Simulator 21 to come out, and I'll do videos on that as well when it does come out. But for now, this is what we have. Uh, just a disclaimer. All the stuff we're going to be using in this is all in-game. I've cleared out all my mods, or at least don't have them selected for this game, just for this tutorial, just to kind of keep things simplified. So what we're going to be talking about, again, is just cultivators, plows, things like that, different ways to kind of prepare your field for planting um, a new crop in it. So we're going to go over plows, cultivators, disc harrows, power harrows, and subsoilers today. So I've selected one of each, and there's a couple of... Uh, special examples um, in some of the categories that we'll talk a little bit about too. So we'll kind of give just a brief overview of each one, what they do and how they work. Um, and that's kind of what we'll do and we'll go from there. So out here I have set up um, kind of from what I'd say the most basic to the more advanced. Um, and it kind of doesn't really matter what order you look at it, but here I just have, I'm just using John Deere tractors for this. I'll probably change up the tractors I use as I do videos. But for here, I have a John Deere hooked up to just a cultivator. This one specifically is the Amazon Senius 8003 2TX Super. Um, over here, I have hooked up to a tractor. I have a disc harrow, which I'd say is kind of the next level up. We're kind of tied with the cultivator as far as what they do. Very similar. This is the Agro Mass BTC50H. And then coming this way more, we have a power uh, harrow. So the power harrow here, this one specifically is... Uh, Akun HR 4004 and then moving up we have a plow just a regular old plow this one is the agromass POH 5 and finally on this side I have a subsoiler this one specifically is the agrosim combi plow gold 4m so these are the basic plows uh, subsoilers cultivators disc heroes we'll just talk about all these a little bit more detail what they do and then we'll go into a few examples I have over there of special cases that are for these. Um, so first up, the cultivator we have here. So again, this is the Amazon Senius 8003 2TX Super. So this is very basic. All it does is cultivate your field. It can clear whatever is out in it um, and prepare it for a new harvest. The disc harrow here is basically does the same thing. All it's going to do is just clear out whatever's on the field and get it ready um, for your next uh, plant that you're going to plant in your field. The power harrow is going to do the same exact thing. Um, the special thing about the power harrow is, again, it's a power harrow, so it needs power. So it does have a PTO, as you'll see in the back there, um, that there's the PTO. So you'll need to hook it up to a tractor that does have a PTO as well, which is a, a power takeoff. Coming this way, this is a plow. This will prepare it for a new seed, a field, but also um, certain fields need, uh, if you go into our map here, over to soil composition, we'll turn everything off. So some of these fields are marked red because they need plowing. So if you're going to do it in your game settings where uh, periodic plowing is required, like I have it on here, I have everything else turned off just for the time being, but just like I have it on here, you can turn it off. But if it's on, then you do when these fields um, have this red marker on them, which I believe is every uh, third harvest or every third rotation of a crop through a field. So when they do have that, uh, you do have to plow them. Otherwise, you will see a... A yield deficit. So that deficit, if you don't plow, is going to be about a 15% deficit to what you'd normally. So if your harvest would normally be 100% of the grain you get, then you'd only get 85%. Um, it says you also have to plow every time after corn, sugar beets, uh, potatoes, and sugar cane. So if that was what was in there last time, you had to plow each time after you harvest. So um, we're going to take a look at these two fields here and we'll do a little work with our cultivators and plows and subsoilers here. So um, we'll get out of this screen. So again, a plow is not only going to prepare the field, but it's going to also mark off that red of the plowing required. Whereas the power harrow, the disc harrow, and the cultivator are not going to do that. So if you need to have it, the field requires plowing and you want to do that, then you will need to use a plow. However, you also can use a subsoiler, which will satisfy that plow requirement. Um, this thing essentially will lower down and go into the ground, then you kind of pull it through the ground, and it kind of rips the ground apart. So that's the advantage of that as well. 
So that's kind of the difference between these guys and these guys here. So um, continuing on, so this, we'll go back and talk about cultivators actually here for a second. So there's a lot of cultivators in the game. Um, if we actually go to the store, um, oops, there we go. If we go to the store here and we go into cultivators. So the one I have selected is gonna be the Amazon um, Senius 8003 2TX Super. Um, in game, uh, the cultivators have a range from a, this one specifically has an eight meter working range. Uh, in game, the cultivators are range between three meters and for the widest or biggest cultivator, it's gonna be a 34 meter working width. Um, all cultivators, including the one I have selected here, have a working speed of nine miles per hour. And then this one specifically cost me 68,000. The range of price in the game is from 7,000 uh, for a smaller cultivator to 186,000 for the biggest one, which is gonna be the uh, FlexiCoil STA 20. Uh, going back, we'll go over here and we'll look at now disc harrows in the store. So disc harrows are gonna be right here, just below cultivator. So the one I have is this guy. This is the Agromass BTC 50H. As a five meter working width in game, the cult or the disc carols will have a working width of between three and 16 meters. This guy runs at 10 miles per hour. That's the working speed. So a little faster than cultivator. So that may be an advantage. It may be why you choose a disc carol over a cultivator. Um, and that's the same speed as all these guys. They all run at 10 miles per hour. Uh, this one cost me 25,000. You can see here the, the range in price is from 13,000 to 121,000. Um, however, again, that 120,000 is for this guy right here, the Lemkin, and it's only going to have a working width of 16 meters versus the Cultivator had a max working width of 34 meters for the biggest one. Um, so take it as it is. Um, it is kind of what it is. Um, for our Power Harrow here, there are actually only two in game um, at the beginning of Farming Simulator when it first came out. So we'll take a look at those guys real quick. And they're going to be under here Power Harrows. So I'm using the Kun HR4004. Um, this one has a working meter of, or a working width of four meters. It runs at nine miles per hour, the same as the Rabe. And this one costs 18,000, obviously this one's 15,000. Um, not a whole lot of difference otherwise, mainly just this one's a meter wider than the Rabe. Horsepower, even the horsepower required to run them is super minor, the difference between the two, just five horsepower. So. Um, really insignificant if you're going to run uh, Power Harrow. And then finally on this side we have, or not finally, sorry, we're going to move next to our plows here. So the plow I'm using is going to be this guy. It's the Agromass POH5. So that has a 2.5 meter working width. In game they run from 2 meters, that's this guy down here, 2 meters all the way up to 10.5 meters. And they all run at a working speed of 7 miles per hour. So again, they're very slow. So um, if you don't have to plow the field, it may be worth it to just use a disc harrow, a cultivator, or a power harrow because you're going to be running a lot slower um, here with this equipment. Um, plow ranges, again, they start at 13000 What I have is 14000 and the, the highest price uh, for a plow in game is going to be 130000 All right, and then finally on this side, we have our subsoiler. So our subsoiler, if we go again into the store, the one I'm using is going to be this guy right here, the AgriSim combi plow gold 4m uh, has a four meter working width uh subsoilers aren't uh there's there's a limited number of them there's only what six in game that are available um so going through those um they have a working width from three meters here all the way up to eight meters um, and they're all at seven miles per hour as their working speed except for a couple of special examples which we're actually going to go over in the second part of this video um, and I'll explain that a little bit later. And the range in price is going to be between 7000 and 82000 um, So again, if you don't have to, if the plowing is not required, just because of that slower working speed, uh, you may not end up using a uh, subsoil just because you're trying to be faster and more efficient. And I have noticed that um, if you are trying to create your own fields, which is an option you can do in-game, Subsoilers, since they're more of a squared back or a straight back versus the plow, which is kind of at an angle typically, it's a lot easier to create your own fields with these guys. Um, so that's what I recommend if you're going to create your own fields because it's easier to get a square field. If it doesn't matter, then it doesn't matter. But if you want a square field, these guys are the ones to do it with. 
All right, so I did say there was some special examples, so we're gonna go over and talk about those real quick. First guy right here I have is actually in the cultivator menu. This one is a cultivator as well. More specifically, this is the Stara ASA Laser CRDCR13 uh, with a 4.9 meter working width, uh, runs at nine miles per hour. Um, which is going to be the same as the other cultivator. So all cultivators, including these guys, are going to run at 9 miles per hour. Um, and this guy cost me 28000 in the store. Um, the special thing about this is this actually, while it cultivates, it will cultivate and plant. So it's not a direct drill, um, which we'll talk about in a different video where I go over planters and seeders. But this is a specifically a cultivator that plants. However, it is limited. It can only plant grass, oilseed radish, and canola. So if those aren't the crops you're wishing to plant, um, I wouldn't use this. However, if you do just have this and you want to run it as a cultivator and you don't want to plant those three crops, you can run it without seeds in it um, and just cultivate a field with it. So it does work that way too. Um, if we go into the store. Again, that's a cultivator spanner here. So here are the two we're talking about. This is the one I have. The other option is the Fox 11. So the Fox 11 um, that's the Star of Fox 11. It has a 3.7 meter working width, so 1.2 meters less than the ASA Laser. Um, it also runs at 9 miles per hour. Um, and this actually costs just a little bit less, so um, it might just be worth the extra 4000 to go up to this one. Um, the other advantage, too, here is the ASA Laser um, holds 845 liters of seeds versus this one only holds 585, as you can see down here. So that may be advantage. And again, only things that can grow is grass, oilseed radish, and canola. Um, so that's what's special about these cultivators. Um, and these are the only two that do that in game. The rest are just regular old cultivators that you'll find um, in the cultivator menu. All right, so moving on, the next special case scenario is a disc harrow. Um, this is a disc harrow that can also uh, plant seeds, very similar to the cultivator that does seeding. This one also can only do grass, oilseed, radish, and canola, so that's another thing. Um, it's the only one of its type that's in the menu. Uh, so if you go into the store, it's under disc arrows, um, and it's going to be this guy right here, the Disco Lander XM52. has a working width of 6 meters, runs at 10 miles per hour, um, just like all the other disc arrows. Um, in addition to that, um, it can only hold 600 liters of seed, so not a whole lot. You'll be refilling it a lot if you're planting a big field or doing anything big with it, especially at a 6 meter uh, working width. You'll be filling that quite often. Um, but it is a pretty fast seeder um, as far as that goes, especially since it's uh, cultivating at the same time. Um, so that's another option you have. Finally for you, this guy is very beefy. This is a subsoiler that can also fertilize the ground. So this guy will not only satisfy the uh, it, the cultivating, it'll give it a cultivated look on the field as well as satisfying the um, plowing requirement a field may have. So again, that plowing requirement as we go into our map is if it's highlighted red, it's plowing. Um, so if it has that requirement, this will satisfy it and it'll give you a level of fertilizer down on the field as well. It takes solid fertilizer. Um, this is the TT Multi Cultivator 5-in-1. This guy has a working width of 3.5 meters, runs at 10 miles per hour, which, if you remember back to our other subsoilers, um, those ones all run at 7, so this actually runs quite a bit faster than the other subsoilers, plus it's going to fertilize. So this may be a really good option to plow a field if that plowing requirement's there. Um, because you also, if you want to just run it at 10 miles per hour without any fertilizer, you don't have to fertilize anything. So this is a fantastic option to quickly plow a field. Um, in addition to that, um, this guy only costs $17,000, so it's not going to take a lot out of your pocket. Um, the biggest, I think, deficit to this guy is that it only holds 600 liters of solid fertilizer. Um, so not a whole lot. You'll be refilling it quite often. However, with this, there are two options if you go into the store. So we'll go here, subsoilers. This guy's actually right at the beginning. And if we go down further, there's this guy right here, which... Terribly long name, but we're just going to call it the Bednar because I don't really want to say that whole name out, but um, there it is. So this guy has a wider working width, so six meters. However, it is a little bit slower. It's at a nine mile per hour uh, working width. However, it's still two miles per hour faster than the other subsoilers would be, so still a good option. It's a fair amount more expensive, but it's not too bad. Uh, the biggest thing you have to notice of this is look at the power this is going to take. Just a huge tractor. 
Um, this guy still needs a pretty beefy tractor, but that'd be more, uh, you'd probably be more able to do that early in game uh, versus running this guy here. Um, but the other big thing with this too is it holds 3,000 liters of solid fertilizer versus 600 for the other guy. And these are the only two options for these guys in here. So that's what I got so far. Um, so those are all the different kind of categories and classes of subsoilers, fertilizers, disc arrows, and cultivators and what have you, any way to prepare a field for new harvest. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, take a quick break, and I'll come back with you um, when we're going to test some of these guys out. All right, so now we're going to talk about uh, some of the results from each of these cultivators, plows, arrows, and what have you, uh, from what they do to a field. So here I just have a field. It was just growing uh, soybeans before. Um, so if you look, after running uh, Amazon over this, we just have a cultivated field. However, you still notice in the field info on in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen um, that plowing is still required here. So again, this carol essentially just goes through. It's the field prepared. Again, no, still needs plowing down in the corner. Uh, we run the power harrow. Here's your result. And again, note it still needs plowing. Go over to the plow. Of course, now it should no longer need plowing. Um, I believe it's not registering because we haven't plowed the whole field or haven't plowed a significant portion of it, but you will no longer need plowing when you have that there done. So coming over subsoiler, um, again, this section is not gonna need to be plowed um, once it actually picks up on that, and that'll be when you do the whole field. Um, coming over here, you notice we have the star. So I did half and half. This is just it running cultivator. Uh, then if you hit B, if you're using PC, you hit the B uh, button on your keyboard and that turns it on. And here you have, now you can notice it says grass growing in the bottom right hand corner. Um, over here, you show it has soybeans growing because that was what we just plowed over or cultivated over. Over here, I did the same thing, except I started with it running. This is the disc arrow with the cedar. Um, over here, it says soybeans because that was, oh, sorry, soybeans because that was the last thing growing. And over here, it's gonna show grass um, because that is what we planted. Over here, we have the subsoil that can also fertilize. So I started off no fertilizer. Um, this one, you might be able to tell in the right-hand corner uh, what it did. So I know this field originally had like a fertilizer state around 50%. Um, so they show it says 40 down there. Then we move into here, and yeah, you can see it goes up. So it definitely uh, fertilized that portion of the field. Um, all right. And we should be able to go into here. And actually, if you go down to the ones that did plow, you could show on the screen there that those areas no longer need plowing, even though it's not showing up on the screen. You go to fertilizer states. Um, so that one is uh, double dark down. You can see that these ones are all um, the first stage, and then there's the second stage. These ones are, that one's only at the second stage for the second portion of it. Uh, the reason those are like that, if you have a crop that's just started to pop up, um, or certain crops that just started to pop up, um, soybeans being one of them, if you plow that crop into the ground, it'll actually count as a fertilizer state for you since it's that's just what it is. So um, there's that for you. But you see there, one fertilizer state, then as it kept going, two fertilizer states. All right, well, that is all I got today for plows and everything else. I hope you found this video helpful or useful in some way. I hope you learned something. Um, again, this is geared to just beginners learning how to play or people that maybe haven't explored all the different pieces of uh, equipment in Farming Simulator 19. Um, I know I love playing this game and I don't use all these pieces of equipment on a regular basis. So sometimes it's good to have a video to help out with that. Um, I'm open to tips, helps, or any, or any suggestions you may have. So feel free to leave a comment. Uh, please drop a like and subscribe if you can. Um, there'll be more videos to come. Uh, thank you.